Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show all about short-term rentals. You've probably heard about them. You've probably heard different news with regards to short-term rentals, but how do you actually buy them and how do you maximize that cash flow and that profit? Today's guest is a maestro <laughs> with regards to that, Mr. Aaron Cavanaugh. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so tell everybody a little bit about yourself, first of all, and how you even got into real estate. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So I've uh, been a real estate agent since uh, 2002. So it's been a little while. Uh, what is that? 22 years now. Mm -hmm. um, started just as a regular agent, you know, just working with buyers and sellers, you know, neighborhoods, stuff that's around me. So what you find is most real estate agents do business in their local area. So they know the areas very well. They know the schools, the restaurants, commute times, things like that. So just sticking around um, in the business that we are um, and where we're located. Um, from there, I got uh, involved with um, Rob Chavez and the Casa Group uh, through eXp Realty. And Long and short of it is uh, they have an investor background, investor focus. And so mm -hmm. they like to help people make money through real estate. Um, and, you know, so as we're part of that, we're learning all about real estate investing. And then all of a sudden uh, COVID comes along. And, uh, you know, at that point, it was pretty straightforward. People were looking for places to go. Mm -hmm. They couldn't go on airplanes and so locally they were looking for areas where they had high speed internet that they could you know visit their properties get away from the cities and you know basically just stay private right and through that um you know obviously everybody then started to rent the properties out they started you know thinking about how they can turn this into an investment because it started as a second home or something like that and then here we are um what i love about being in a short-term rental uh, business is really the architecture, the locations, um, the fun that's coming with it, right? Using it as a place where you can visit and, and vacation yourself, right? Yeah. Um, so that that to me is what the, the most fun is. And when you're in real estate, having fun is very important. <laughs> You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And especially so full disclosure to everybody who is watching. I also work for and with Rob Chavez and the team. So, yes, we are very investor focused, which is why our loans and what we do within Simply Fund, a lot of it is very <clears throat> investor focused as well. Um, but going back to COVID, how mm -hmm. much of that also had to do with people were already familiar with Airbnb and they were already familiar as consumers with this idea of short-term rentals. So it was just a matter of, like you said, lightning in a bottle. Yeah. It, it just needed a little push. I mean, this, you know, mm -hmm. short-term rentals is not a new opportunity. Um, you know, and still to this day, um, you know, a lot of the communities that are out there are now really putting down the rules and regulations against uh, Airbnb or short term rentals because they didn't have any before that nobody actually was doing it. So it's still a relatively new uh, type of real estate investing, but mm -hmm. at the same time, not something so brand new that, you know, people don't know anything about it. Um, you know, I, I love the experience when it comes to that. So you know, for me, if I travel, I always like to choose an Airbnb because while hotels are fine and they usually have a ton of amenities, having the ability to be in your own private space with your own private kitchen, you know, re reserving, <coughs> excuse me, reserving somebody's home um, to stay to me is a lot more relaxing. It's more relaxing. It's more comfortable. You can, what I loved about it was being able to use the kitchen. So right. I could, I could go to Wegmans, stock yep. up on my, all my favorite stuff, you know, right. and we travel in the car and it's no problem. We have all our favorite stuff when we get to the Airbnb on the other side. So that's right. Uh, that's some right. people may be confused as to what short-term rentals are versus medium-term rentals versus long-term rentals. Sure. Can you give people just a bit of a definition and explain the differences amongst Absolutely. those terms? Yeah. So uh, a full-time rental is a property that you're going to rent on an annual basis, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to start with a property that's going to make you, you know, about the, the general rules, about 1% of the monthly 
Um, so if your mortgage payment is $2,000, you want to be able to rent it for $2,000 mm -hmm. or, or, and make sure that you're covering your costs, right? So in um, a midterm rental, that's anything more than 30 days. I call this basically a month to month. And then uh, short term is anything less than 30 days at a time. Absolutely. So um, families, of course, like short term rentals. Are there other groups of people that really gravitate towards short term rentals? What does the market really look like for the consumers and maybe even the business people that are using this as a product? Yeah. So if you've got um, a lot of people that travel for work, right, um, having a short term rental to, to drop in on um, is a benefit that the company could could help with. Um, I, I talk about that, this mostly with midterm rentals because you have traveling nurses and doctors, you have, um, you know, insurance claims that people have to be in a property for multiple months at a time. Um, so there's different types of in, you know, short-term, midterm type situations, but it, it truly covers a big gamut of, of where you are, um, as far as a business, as far as a, uh, an investor, as well as, you know, as a traveler yourself. Yeah. So um, what areas of the country do you actually serve with short-term rentals? And when you are working with a client and then with the property, walk us through a bit of your process with regards to how you make all of that come together for people. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, so I live in um, Clark County, uh, Berryville, Virginia. Uh, but I cover the Shenandoah Valley pretty well. Um, so that is um, Clark County, Frederick County, Virginia, uh, Warren County, um, Shenandoah, and Page counties. Mm -hmm. So there's pretty pretty large territory in there. Now, I've also gone a little further than that into Rockingham, onesie twosies there, um, county, as well as, you know, some others, like, you know, Loudoun and Fairfax and things like that. But a lot of times the properties that I – really work on have been um, in the Western area here, uh, Route 81 corridor, Shenandoah Valley. That's a very popular area in the United States because of what there is to do. Um, so we get a lot of opportunity just for, for that. And, and the price of real estate is a lot, a lot more attractive for what yeah. you can get. So what is there to do in that area? I know that there yeah. are some great vacation spots there. Yeah, great question. So it's it's a mountain range, right? So it, it's hiking, it's camping, it's uh, there's the Shenandoah River. Um, so you've got a lot of you know activities like kayaking and canoeing. It's not necessarily deep enough for boating, but there are some areas of the of the river that are capable of that. There's also you know like caverns, wineries, breweries. Um, you know, just different areas that people like to visit. And it's a three season situation. Um, you know, springtime is beautiful. Uh, summertime is where you get the most traffic. And then the fall, you get all the, the fall, the leaf foliage and the colors changing and, and all of that. Now, you know, that's what I see. Um, there's a couple of communities that, that are full time and they're more resort based. Um, but, um, you know, that, that is a little bit different marketplace than, than what we are. The other thing is, um, for where we are, we're about two hours from D.C., Washington, D.C., and so it's a very big, attractive location for people wanting to get out of the city and spend some time in the country. Right, right, absolutely. Not too far. I mean, we, we used to do that all the time when we were in Fairfax. We would go to the Shenandoah Valley all the time. So, but it's, it's enough of a trip where you do want to stay overnight if you can. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, that's, I think, absolutely. where a lot of the short term rental attractiveness comes in. And then I know there's Massanutten and places like that as well. So, yeah. So, you got Bryce Mountain, you got Massanutten, mm -hmm. and then you've got other places that are further west into West Virginia. Um, you've got Deep Creek Lake area, Wisp and all and those different ski resorts, right? Um, but what I found um, in, in how I really look at, at a property for someone mm -hmm. is to really narrow down what their goals are, right? Mm -hmm. So we, I mentioned earlier the 1% rule. So the first and most important thing is to make sure that the investment is going to be solid, right? So I know based on my history how many properties I've sold, how many, you know, areas that I've sold in, what the actual, you know, average occupancy rates are, 
right? Mm -hmm. So I know that in Warren County, Front Royal, you're going to see a 50 to 75% occupancy rate. And then we have to match for a short-term rental, right? So when I say 50%, that means 15 days out of the month, basically you're going to cover your weekends, okay? Great. And so if you can get more than that in there, then you're you're starting to make some money, right? And so we analyze each property with different tools like AirDNA. We use other tools like MashVisor or Rabu. Um, and we combine all the projection tools that we have. I've got a spreadsheet or two that, that can actually analyze a deal if you want to put it into that and what renovations it might need and things like that what, what uh, other cap costs you might have, like furniture and hot tubs and, you know, things to, to really bring in people and get them, you know, to stay at your place. Right. Um, so uh, we do all of that work up front. We, we really get into, you know, not sending them every single listing that's out in that way, but we send them the special ones. Um, log cabins, A-frames, something that's got a view, something that's along the river, you know, we, we analyze all the different parts of it. And, and really what we're seeing is a lot of people that have done it before mm-hmm. and really weren't professional at it. Right. It's getting too hard because there are there is a lot of competition. And so we see a lot of people that are selling these properties off to, to 1031 into different opportunities or different areas. That's great. So then talk to us about the type of person that would do well with a short term rental. What, yeah. what kind of investor does well with that? Great. So I'm going to start with a very basic. So if you have a ton of equity in your own home, your personal residence, right? Mm-hmm. You can take some of that money, pull an equity line or something like that, and use what we call a second home loan. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the first, first situation would be just as a property that I'm going to go and visit, you know, now, with a second home loan, they they have certain requirements. You have yeah, to live in the property, you know, 50%, 50 miles of the time. Mm-hmm. It has to be a certain number of miles away from your home, things like mm-hmm. that. So, you know, that is a, a, an avenue for an investor, right? Start off with it as a second home loan. Um, get it to a certain point where you've uh, finished the requirements of the loan. And then uh, offer it as a short-term or mid-term rental down the line. Okay. So that's the first way. Second way is a standard conventional investor loan. You're putting 20, 25% down payment. Um, You're going to use this as an investment property. It's claimed that um, on the, on the contract through the mortgage. So we're not, you know, doing anything that's nefarious or or causing any legal issues with anyone. Um, And then the third option that I see a lot of the time, well, there's, there's a few others, obviously cash, you can do cash, if you wanted to, or what we call a DSCR. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I don't know what the acronym stands for, <laughs> but stands I know for debt service coverage ratio. <laughs> debt service coverage ratio. Okay, mm-hmm. I gotta remember that. Um, yes. But basically, your 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 monthly income is going to cover what the mortgage lender is going to require as far as your monthly payment would be. Yes. Right. That is correct. And yeah, and so um, we have a relationship with Cherie purposefully um, mm-hmm. because when you're dealing with this, um, a lot of times the, the person does not want their name on the property. They want to have mm-hmm. some anonymity and or, in, um, you know, insurance coverage. Mm-hmm. So they're going to use an LLC or a business name. That's going to help them protect their personal assets. If something bad were to happen. And so, you know, a lot of regular standard lenders don't want to deal with that. Absolutely. Right. So dealing with somebody that's either a got some, you know, investor type backing, um, hard money loans, or you know, obviously cash is not a finance situation, but you know, it's certainly something that we we run into with investors as well. Yeah, and and we have refinanced people who have also bought it all cash and then wanted to refinance it at a different time. So we yeah. are simply funded, able to do the second home loans if you need them. We are also able to do conventional loans for investors if you need them. And of course, we do the DSCR loans if you need them. So definitely coming to us. We love working with Aaron as well as realtors around the nation who are helping people maximize the um, profitability of short-term rentals because 
there are a lot of people who do not maximize the profits. There are a lot of people who, right. you know, don't do it uh, right, quote unquote, right. So that's why I wanted to have Aaron on here to talk with the community so that you would know what you're looking for in a property and then how to actually manage the property in a way where people are like, oh, I want to book that place. And then yeah. they go to yeah. that place and then they give you great reviews and then more people want to book your, yeah. your property. So uh, you have worked with a lot of people with regards to maximizing their profits. Um, I want to go back to one more thing. Air DNA, uh, the the they call it the rentalizer. It will give you a forecast for what the short term rental should make. But connecting with someone like Aaron, who knows how to select and manage short term rentals, or can tell you how to manage them for maximum profit, you can easily beat those numbers. Um, yeah. And I will tell you, so a lot of times, this is just something to get started. Okay. Mm -hmm. So having the actual experience of other investors, I'm talking to my past clients about how their year went, how their months went, what mm -hmm. types of reviews are they getting? Because I've seen their homes, right? I've seen what things they have in their properties. And, you know, I see, you know, through different angles, right multiple properties at the same time, not just mm -hmm. what their own property could do. So I see what a competition is kind of looking like, right? Um, whether or not it has a game room, does it have a pool table or a hot tub or a sauna, or does it have an EV charging station? Who knew that that was going to be something of, of value? But if you don't have one, you're out of luck, number one. Because there's a lot of people with the with a Tesla or other you know electric vehicles that would would love to have that. Um, also, allowing pets. You know, this is a trial and error business. We have as a as a team, we have two Airbnbs ourselves, and you know we've gone through a year's worth of experience, and now we know what people love, especially in in the area that we are. So, taking a step back, every area is different, right? So. Uh, there are destinations, right? So those destinations like Orlando, where you have Disney, you have, you know, whatever theme parks there are, right? Those are usually a longer term stay, right? Outer Banks, that's a destination. You're going to stay at a longer period of time. Whereas Shenandoah Valley, because it's only two hours away from DC, the minimum would be a weekend, right? I don't, don't necessarily, I mean, I know there are people that definitely get week long stays, um, but it's more of the tr passing through or just we're going to spend the weekend out our way. And so, like I said, it's just it, each area has a different fit flavor to it, right? So, you know, if you're looking at Massanutten, for example, that might be a week long stay because there are so many things to do. They have indoor water park, outdoor water park. They have zip lines. They have skiing. They have golf. They have restaurants. They have, um, there's just, you know, go karts. There's, there's, yeah, there's days yeah. and days worth of things to do, and you don't have to leave the resort. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you come to Shenandoah Valley, and you go to the river one day, you go hiking another day, and then you're back to back to the game. So, right. um, it's it's so you start with what does that that look like, right? So, mm -hmm. this is what our area can do, and these are the <clears throat> the average prices that you can get, right? And then these are the average nightly occupancy rates and and things like that. So we start with all of those projections up front. Then once we, I send a list off to the, to the client or the prospect. Now I don't send every house on the planet to them because there are some that are in HOAs. There are some that are in, you know, certain areas that don't allow short-term rentals. Yeah. I also am only sending properties that I think that would be unique enough for somebody to stay in. Yeah. So, but that can also get financed as well. It, unless, yeah. Unless, yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, having an agent that's really focused in on on the bare bones of what this business looks like is important because, yes, a regular agent can help you buy a property. Contracts are very similar, but knowing your projections in and out, um, it's a big deal. Knowing where to go, what, what to kind of look for when you're there. Um, you know, who knew that you needed to have a 100 foot 
foot of uh, separation between your your property if you if you get one in in Warren County between the next door neighbor mm. from you know side to side you know so if your house is 48 feet from the next door neighbor you may not get the permit and then your then your business is in trouble yeah so there are certain things that you have to know up front and we try to you know have the cutting edge of all that information up front Yes. So ultimately, you want to be honest with your realtor. You want to be honest with your lender with regards to what your plans are, are what you're trying to do and do that before you put offers in as well. I have some very yeah. ambitious clients and they'll contact me and say, hey, Cherie, I got an offer. And, and then we put the, the uh, numbers in and it's like, you're not going to cash flow with this house. Right. So um you know, so just being aware of that as well. And, and I, I say leverage your realtor. Find a realtor, number one, who has experience. So if you're not in the Northern Virginia area, then finding a realtor who has experience. You can come to Aaron and say, hey, Aaron, who do you know in wherever it is uh, right. around the nation? And right. if we know somebody, we will connect you to the right people. Um, and then, of course, connecting with the right the right um, lender who I will tell you, sometimes you'll get hard money because you decide you want to purchase the property and rehab it. But if we cannot then refinance you within a year, you're going to end up in trouble. So if you tell me that that's what you want to do, you intend to do some massive renovations to this property, I will yeah. do the third and fourth set of calculations, make sure that you're going to be able uh, to refinance that that property and not have an issue, you know? Yeah. And, and honestly, to give Cherie some, some very big props here, this is the reason why I use Cherie in, in most of my deals is because she comes from a, an investor background mindset and knows exactly what we're doing when it comes to certain things. And so mm -hmm. if you are able to say, hey, I want to buy a property and use the Burr method, buy mm -hmm. it, renovate it, you know, and refinance it, whatever, whatever that an acronym yeah. is, right? <laughs> um, you, you know, the honest answer is you have to be able to get it at a certain price, right? So, yeah. you know, the properties that I see, some of them, I mean, we bought one that I thought was in 100% ready to rock and roll shape. And we mm -hmm. still put in $45,000 worth of work. Mm -hmm. we, added a hot tub, we added a hot tub pad. We added a fire pit mm -hmm. spot. We put some stairs down from the deck to the to the uh, fire pit area. We put new flooring in. We painted the whole house. There were things that I, you know, would have been fine with overall. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it was much better opportunity to get it done up front with other investors, right? So we have multiple investors in on this property. Um, and so that's another way to handle it too, is, you know, having partnerships. But, you know, if we weren't able to to cash flow the way we wanted to, and, and again, we follow the, you know, if you buy a property, for, so let's just use 300,000 as an example. Um, mm -hmm. The minimum on a 50% occupancy is that $3,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's my 1% rule on a 50% occupied property. Yeah. Right. So if, if I that. now yeah. know that this is averaging 50% occupancy, then we have to bring our rate up to make that number happen. So mm -hmm. if it's 15 nights a week or a month, excuse me, we need to be at $200 a month. Yeah. Or a night. Now, do you count just the mortgage, which is principal interest, taxes, insurance, I'm or looking at, the, I don't the, look at the mortgage per se. I'm looking okay. at the price of the house. You're looking at the price of the house. Okay. Right. And I'm using 50% occupancy. Okay. Okay. So that's not, you know, that may, with the current interest rates, that may not cover mm -hmm. the mortgage payment. Okay. Right. All right. But, but things, yeah. There are things that you should do to get more occupancy. Right. So yes. we're going to use other tools after you buy the property. <clears throat> we're going to use Instagram. We're going to use Facebook. We're going to market the property. We're going to have a Google page. We're going to, we're going to have a Facebook page. We're going to, we're going to do price labs for, you know, dynamic pricing to make sure that we're, you know, in line with what other properties are going okay. for that particular mm -hmm. and what they look like. Yeah. Right. If you have five homes on the same neighborhood and they're all very similar, 
what does yours offer that someone else does? You know, so mm -hmm. it's that gas station mentality, right? Yeah. We're not going to go cheaper necessarily. We're going to add more amenities so that we can increase the value of the property. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So <clears> how now, if, people... if I will tell you <clears throat> on that same $300,000 property, if I can make $6,000 a month, mm -hmm. then I know golden. I'm golden, yeah. right? So, yeah. You know, last year on that one property that we bought, it was three hundred thousand. We made fifty three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. We were good, mm -hmm. right? Could we have improved? Absolutely. There are things that we missed. There are things that we trial and error that we spent money on. There are, you know, when you charge a cleaning fee, we were paying our cleaner the same fee. Mm -hmm. We can yeah. we can adjust certain things that you can use as cash sources. Yeah. There's another the other way to do things too, um, and this is a great one. You can have another vendor, an artist, or a staging company with furniture. Mm -hmm. Put it in the property, put a sign for sale, and if somebody wants to buy that, then they could pay you a fee to to have their stuff in your property. Interesting, right? So. You know, I see it all the time. I go to an Airbnb and there's a price tag on the on a piece of art in the wall. I love it. I'm like, oh, geez. And so I contact the owner. Yeah, that's for sale. It's $600 if you want it. Take it with you. And then, you know, mm -hmm. and then she pays the, the artist a fee or whatever the case may be. And there you go. Wow. That is interesting. <clears throat> Very interesting. You yeah. know, um, I just think that that. It's important, especially if you are a first time investor or if you are a, a first time short term rental investor to really connect yourself with Aaron, even if you're not going to buy in his area, you know, in his yeah. geographic area. Aaron is a wealth of information and it's so important for us as a community to be able to know who to go to in order to get really good, solid information, because the worst thing that we want to have is an underperforming investment. So, yeah, I mean, you, you can always take that investment and do a 1031 exchange. Now you don't mm -hmm. want to lose money, right? right. So right. we want to make sure that we're, we're maximizing the opportunity. So there are ways mm -hmm. to help you get out of a property if it's not performing or if it's just too much, right? Because mm -hmm. it's the hospitality business. It is what it yeah. is. Yeah. Right. So you are a an investor. You're a numbers person. You're not really a marketing person. You still have to do some marketing. Yeah. You still or you have, have to get take great photographs. You have to mm -hmm. do all of the the day to day operations. If something breaks, you have to be willing to take a phone call at 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. or get a management company. Now, factoring in management company fees, right? So mm -hmm. it could be anywhere from five percent all the way up to 20, 25 percent. Yeah. I stayed at an Airbnb at, in. Uh, Myrtle Beach. It was a one bed, one bath condo. It was really cheap, actually. It was $150 a night. It was very nice right along the beach. Um, but she was paying 25% to the building for each person that was staying in her property. Wow. It was, it was, it was absolutely insane. And I'm trying to like calculate the numbers in my head. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and she was like, Well, we are not, we are covering our costs. We're not mm -hmm. making money, but now I own an asset that is something that down the line will have equity built. Right? Yeah, she's looking so at appreciation. Mm -hmm. Different type of investment. I mean, you're you're playing the game yeah. that we are, yeah. right? But the investment is the length of time, um, and or something where your children can be passed down to, or mm -hmm. um, like I said, you can go and visit. You go visit for free. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So if you like to go to Myrtle Beach and you have a place mm -hmm. to go for free, just reserve that week yourself and you know, know that you're not making money that week, but at the same time, you you have don't have to spend it. You don't have to spend, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars to have your family uh lodge someplace. So That's yeah, right. yeah. Well, how do people get in touch with you, Aaron, if they want to chat yeah. with you? Yeah. Great question. So I am a local real estate agent. You can find me on Facebook and Google, uh, Aaron Cavanaugh, the Casa Group. Um, uh, my cell phone number, 703-431-8310 is the only number that I have out there. Uh, my email, Aaron, E-R-I-N, at thecasagroup.com, and that's C-A-Z-A dot um, com. And if you, if you have just questions, uh, let me know. One other thing I forgot to mention. I'm listening to podcasts. I'm watching other 
companies. I'm watching what others are doing and I'm learning as mm -hmm. investors. The best thing that you can do is learn from somebody that's doing, doing it better than you. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of coaching programs out there right now. There are plenty of, you know, platforms like Evolve and Vacasa that you can tap into and get information from where, you know, you can really learn how to do this business and make a lot of money. I have one client that he owns 15 properties and he makes over $150,000 a year just managing these properties. Mm -hmm. And he has three children and each of them will get five or whatever the number is when he's ready to retire and they'll have their own business to get started in. So it's just, you know, how you want to play the game. Um, yeah. I think it's a great business. Um, and it is, I, you know, what I didn't tell you is when I came out of college, I was a restaurant manager. It was hospitality business. I wanted to own a bar. Never got to that point because the liabilities with everything were too much. But now in the end of this real estate thing, man, it's a lot of fun. They, the, it's a vacation every day. Um, you get to see people that are happy making money and they contact me and say, Hey, can I, how, how can I improve this? What can I do? And then I would go out to the property, talk to them a little bit, and then we would add a pool table or, you know, maybe add a hot tub, even though it's, you know, sometimes harder to manage because you have to clean the hot tub. Right. But I do know that you're going to get 20% more bookings if you have one versus not. Right. Right. So it's just doing the numbers. Yeah. It's the little the things. Having yeah. pets be able to stay in the property. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. You never know. And I was a I was fully against it. Although I love my dog, I wouldn't bring him on vacation with me. But now I know there are people that go away for the weekend that go hiking. They want to they bring their dog. And the we pets, were being yeah. bypassed by a mm -hmm. ton of people because we didn't have dogs available. Yeah. Yeah. So and I was I was always nervous about that, but I heard from various short-term rental people that most of the pets are house trained and they don't destroy anything. I mean, you have a pet deposit is my understanding, but you can have a pet I, deposit. Heard, sure. Yeah. I've heard good things about pets going to um, other people's houses that they're fine. So yeah. What, what What's the most important? I mean, what's the thing that could happen the worst, right? If they have an accident on the floor, yeah. most of the properties that I know or owned have LVP flooring. Mm -hmm. Not going to have a problem with that. Right. Yeah. Um, so if you have carpet, that's one thing. But if you have, you know, LVP flooring or hardwood floors, you're not going to have as many issues. The biggest thing that I see is hair on the furniture. But we in our owner's closet have a special brush that can mm -hmm. brush down the the, um, the, pet the hair. furniture and mm -hmm. vacuum it up and it's gone. So yeah. there's not, you know, it's just dependent on where it is and, and what's, you know. <clears throat> I would not want to go away for a week to Hawaii and bring my dog. I'm sorry. I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> right. So that's a different story, but you know what I mean by that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But going up the street, you know, going hundred miles away for the weekend. Yeah. Bring your pet, bring your yep. pet. That's right. So, <laughs> well, that's thank right. you, Aaron. Uh, thank you to everybody who is here today. Malika did put something in the chat. Uh, so hello to Malika. If you're still here and yes, let's make some money with real estate. Let's get these uh, short-term rentals. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Sheree. I appreciate you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.